Music has always been something that's very personal to me. It's very special. Music can always transport me to like places or events or moments or even to a particular feeling. And then so the reason why I wanted to record these pieces is to share my stories and my memories with you. And hopefully as I am remembering, reliving and relishing in the stories and memories, I hope that you can also remember, relive, relish your own memories or even create new ones. So the Chopin Nocturne in E flat major, Opus 9 number 2, um, I think everybody knows this piece. I think this piece has been always been very popular for those of us who listen to classical music. I personally never felt the need to actually learn this piece because I feel like it's so overplayed. Um, but it wasn't until uh, my best friend, who's more like a sister, actually got married in 2017 that I decided to actually learn this piece um, as a wedding gift to her and her husband. And um, I think approaching this piece as I was already in my mid-20s is probably very different than if I probably would have if I learned this in my teenage years. And then so I came up with an interpretation that was mine um, and I hope that you enjoy it. And um, I didn't actually get to play this at her wedding, but uh, I did play it at um, my concert, which is a couple of weeks after the wedding. And she was there and then it felt very special because I was learning this for a particular person and I knew that she really enjoyed it a lot. So that's the story behind this piece. And then um, we have the Brahms Intermezzo uh, in A major, Opus 118, number two. This piece is something um, that I really, really enjoyed learning. I learned this during my undergraduate years. And the funniest story about this piece is that my teacher actually asked me um, to figure out a sound that would be appropriate for this piece. So I played it for him and then um, he said that the sound is not right. And then so I asked him, I was just like, so what's not right about it? Is it too light? Is it too dark? Is it too bright? Is it too loud? Is it too soft? And then he was just like, no, it's none of those things. But he asked me to basically um, explore and to like find that sound on my own. And I was like, how am I supposed to find a sound that I don't even know. What am I looking for? And then so he was he was telling me that he was like, it's like you're seeing a person for the first time, but uh, you kind of know that you're gonna marry them. <laughs> At that time, I found that um, very interesting. And then, um, but after a couple of days of just like trying to figure out that sound, I actually found it um, in the practice room one one day and. It's very surprising to me how music works. Um, it's very wonderful in its sense that sometimes um, my heart or my ears or what I think actually knows about something before I even um, am able to actually produce it. So kind of uh, puts things in perspective that um, music actually goes deeper than just what's on the surface or what we know. So another piece is the list um, transcription of the Schumann song uh, called Widmo. So this piece is something that's very personal to me because I've played this piece for probably about 15 <laughs> years. And then every single time that I play this piece, I things always are different. Um, it, I, I first learned this piece as a 16-year-old um, when I first played my first ever solo recital before I decided to pursue music. I've, I was never uh, the most expressive kid um, with my music, but back then I just thought that this piece was um, very, very beautiful. But as I keep on learning it and learning it and learning it and playing it again um, over this past 15 years, um, I kind of grow to appreciate it more because of the meaning that lies behind it, the power of what it was actually trying to portray, 
and um, it's it's always like a really really good reminder of how music actually evolves with you and how you can always find something new to explore every single time. The Debussy Claire de Lune. Um, this is almost similar to the Chopin Nocturne in the case that it was always very popular. It was one of those like uh, 100 pieces of classical music, easy listening classical music. Um, and I never had the, the, the will to actually learn it. It's, it's, it's too popular in my mind. And then so it wasn't until I was doing my doctorate studies and one of my friend, one of my dear friend, um, was a violinist and she wants to play the transcription of the Claire de Lune for violin and piano and I accompanied her and that's when I realized that something so simple could actually be so beautiful and that it doesn't matter how many times other people have played it or how many times I've ever heard it but there's always something that's very personal in every single piece of music that you're playing so um, I decided to learn it and it becomes one of my favorites um, now. So the Mother Goose medley, um, I think this is probably one of the oddball in this album and the reason why is because music has always been a part of me since I was young. Uh, I started playing the piano when I was three so there was never a moment in my life um, or in my memory that I wasn't playing the piano. I've, for, for as long as I can remember, I've always been playing the piano. And then nursery rhymes was always a big part of it. So this Mother Goose medley, I think, is a very, very uh, appropriate <laughs> um, to kind of just get my memories like of, of, of my childhood and of learning pianos when I was young. It reminded me of a much um, simpler time. Um, just kind of like childhood innocence and just the carefreeness of being a kid. <laughs> the Billy song. Um, I actually was never a big fan of jazz for the longest time. For me, it was always been um, difficult to follow or like there's no there's no clear chords and there's always like more stuff to listen to. But um, as the longer that I stayed in the States and probably also the longer that I learned music, um, jazz has become more and more and more and more and more something that I enjoy listening. So. I, 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 I remember there's this one time where me and my friends just went to this jazz club overlooking the Central Park in New York City and that was probably one of the moments where I was just like, wow, I actually don't have to always think forward. I can just be here and enjoy the moment and listen to something, um, Not don't have to understand it right away and it's just enjoy the moment. And I feel like this is the same way with this song, it just enjoying every moment, not taking anything for granted, and just, yeah, basically being happy where you are. The last one is actually very special. Uh, this song called Kenangan Manis, which is um, a sweet memory. It was written by somebody that I know. Um, the composer is actually the daughter of my childhood piano teacher and she wrote it um, for her dad who passed away last year. And um, because uh, her mother was my childhood piano teacher, so our family has grown very close basically and then so their family has a really, really big impact on me. Uh, the same way um, her dad, um, I, I, I know him quite well. And that there's something very personal about remembering the memory of someone, especially someone very close to you. And granted, it's just like the relationship with that person always um, is different, right? Person to person. But there's always something that's very special when you know that a piece is written by written by somebody that you know and for somebody that you know and so um, so yeah so this piece is dedicated to Om Henki Sulaiman um, and I was always inspired by his positivity and his contagious laughter and um, energy and I hope that ah, 
well, I mean, I can inspire people as much as he has inspired me. So, there it is. I hope that everybody's enjoying this recording and I hope that you will share your memories with me as well. That's it.